Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning. We're glad to be in the presence of the Lord. It's always good to worship Jesus. And we want to welcome everyone to join us in that. So do not be bashful. Do not be timid about it. Give God praise. Amen. I wanted to, wanted to direct your attention to the book of James today. Chapter 4, verse 8. I'll be preaching from this text. James chapter 4, verse 8. And the scripture goes like this. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Double-mindedness speaks of doubting God. The writer here says various things, many, many things, some of which we'll get into today in the message. But he says, purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Do not doubt the Lord, but look to him. And I want to look to him today in prayer before we begin the message and preach on the title, A Time to Draw Near. Precious Lord, we ask your blessings upon this message now and your messenger, Lord, bless this time in your house today. Touch the hearts of every listener, we pray, in the wonderful name of the Lord. At a time that we are being directed to take various precautions and careful steps for the sake of our health and that of others around us, part of what we are being instructed to do is to separate ourselves from one another as much as possible. Keeping six feet away from our fellow man is part of the constant reminder. It's on the lips of everyone, it seems, these days. It's a directive being shared with us so as to not breathe up closely to someone and possibly share a sickness that we don't have, probably, not this time. But it is a constant reminder and a directive to us about precaution and safety. Now that's according to the local judges, the governors, and the president of our nation. But according to the half-brother of our Lord, to be spiritually distant has never been the directive. In fact, James says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Isn't that what we want, folks? people of this city, of this nation, and around the globe. Isn't that what we're looking for? Isn't that what we want? To be close to the Lord. Don't we want God to be near to us and we to Him? Don't we want the presence of Jesus constantly? And don't we want God to move on the scene and bless our lives? Yes. Any right-thinking individual would say yes and agree to this. Of course, that's what we're out for. That's what we want today. And so it isn't just today, since it, is, uh, it so happens, a Sunday, that we want to worship God. But we ought to be willing and ready to do that every day, at any time, because God desires a closeness. And so the scripture here in James 4 and 8 encourages us, and really it's a command, to draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to the one that made us, the one that placed us here. He didn't put us on planet earth for us to destroy everything and ruin ourselves and self-destruct through wickedness and sin. But he put us here to become his subjects and his people, the people of his pasture that would serve him and worship him, know him, laud him and give him the praise. And that's what we want to do today. James is writing to the dispersed Jewish Christians. He's addressing divisions among them. In this passage of Scripture, he talks about their unanswered prayers, prayers with the wrong motives behind them. And sometimes that can be the case, that we pray with the wrong things in mind, with the wrong motives in heart. We're asking things out of selfishness perhaps, but if we will ask with the right spirit, if we will pray with the right heart, 
And if we will have that true penitence of the heart that God's looking for, let me tell you, dear friend, God will meet with you. God will bless you, and he'll provide all that you need because he's a great, big, wonderful God. He's a God that hears. He's not deaf. A God that sees, he observes, he has eyes to look upon mankind with. He has feelings for us, and he loves us dearly, and he wants to bless our lives. There is reproof for some of their sinful practices here. And therefore, they couldn't have the right fellowship with God because of their sin. Well, James writes concerning these things. And he doesn't really pull punches, does he? But he gets down to where the rubber meets the road. He talks very clearly and very pointedly. And in verse 4, he, so, he said, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And so to whomever it concerns today and, and whoever is listening, I want you to know that if you want to be a friend of God, you've got to recognize the fact that the world cannot be our friend. We live in the world and we are a part of the count here of the census in our country and, and in our world. But really, we're not of the spirit of this world at all. And Jesus shared that with us. And so we know that as believers, we now have the attitude of Christ. The things of God mean everything to us. And we want to busy ourselves and, and live our lives with the things of God and, and give attention to the things of the Lord and, lest we let them slip. Lest we become something other than what He wants of us. And so... Let us consider these things. Now I want to look at the instructions given to us. In verse 7, James the writer said, Submit yourselves therefore to God. How about that today? Not only this day, but having listened to this, maybe you'll recall these words tomorrow and the days following. And you'll remember and go back to the scripture yourself. I didn't write this. I'm preaching from something already given and authored by God himself. And God's the one that is saying, it's time to submit yourselves. It's time to yield your vessel to the Lord today. At this time of your life, let it be permanent, dear friend. Brother and sister, Christian person, whoever you are, maybe lost one, unbeliever, whoever you may be, take heed now and listen to the words as James wrote, but God is trying to get our attention. He said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I like that promise in God's word. Meaning, the devil is an aggressor. And if you do not resist him, he will rush to you and try to shipwreck your life. That's how Satan operates. That's his M.O., let me tell you and inform you or remind you today that we are not his servants any longer as believers. Since we have given ourselves to the Lord and we are now children of the light, we are God's people. We make up the church, the family of God. We are an extension of Jesus Christ upon this earth and therefore take heed. And let us look to the reminders of God's word and remember, hey, we belong to Christ. Not, not to ourselves. We certainly don't belong to the devil, though some don't believe he even exists. He does exist. But let me tell you what, there is a greater than he. There is a mightier one than he today, and that's the one that lives and abides within us. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, it is time to realize these things. Resist the devil, he said. And the promise has it, he will flee from you. He has no option or choice but to do so. And so if you will put up a good fight, in other words, if you will make your stand for Christ and not wimp out 
about it, but realize just who you are in Jesus and remember what Christ has granted to you, then you will stand tall and strong and be what God called you to be and you won't have to flinch when the devil shows his tactics. When the enemy comes or roaring and bothering him and trying to seduce you, you'll be able to say, hey, wait a minute, Slewfoot, I trust in the living God. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. And I'm going to serve him while resisting you. Because the Lord is my Savior. He's my Lord. So take your rightful position in Christ Jesus. And toe the line as he would have you to. That means make a stand unflinchingly. Do not give up and yield to the world. There's so much out there and there's so many vices available and so many things that hold people back and, and tempt their lives and really tries to ruin them. But when we open up ourselves to the things of God and we become a child of the Lord, we find out very quickly that God has so much available for us and to us. So there's no reason to feel that you are uh, on the losing end and, and that because sickness is going around or because problems have arisen in your life that you are going to be victimized and therefore washed out. We're not washouts. We are the children of the Lord. And so let us remember that and hold on to that fact and realize that, hey, I am called by the grace of God. And I belong to a greater than he that's in the world. I belong to Jesus. Amen. So the admonition here is draw near or nigh to God. That's our desire today. Let a closeness develop between you and the God of heaven. Maybe it is a strained or estranged relationship that you have. Well, go back. Recover. Return to the Lord and call upon his name. And I can assure you today and any other day, if you'll respond to the call of God, which is always a resounding come, God will respond to you and he will answer your sincere prayers uh, and he will hear um, uh, your heart of penitence and repentance uh, and he will say, yes, I'm here for you. Um, so come on in and dwell with me. Let me dine with you, God will say, um, because I love you. Don't you know the love of God has not diminished? It has not shrunk him. It is not dissipating and going away, but it is real. It is huge today. And so respond and let God have his way in your life. Amen. Desire to be in his presence and experience his touch in your life. It's about more than learning how to better quote the scriptures and knowing where they're placed at in the Bible. It's about appropriating the scriptures. And so let us take them to heart. It is such a time to run to Christ. And let's seek Him while there is an opportunity. For the promise follows, and He will draw nigh to you. I like this. He said, draw nigh to God. But then, furthermore, he will draw nigh to you in return. Do your part, in other words. And God will certainly not renege on his promise. You approach him and say, Lord, I need your help. I desire your touch. I want your presence. And you know what? God will not forsake that. But he will certainly be there to meet with you. And cleanse your hands. He would further right. Purify your hearts. He double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep, which simply means that there be a heart that renders itself to God. If there's a need for mourning and weeping because of repentance, then so be it. If sin has created a problem in your heart, it needs to be reversed. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. He's not saying fail to be happy, but if that laughter is founded upon wickedness and sin. Then it needs to be gotten rid of. Let us weep unto God. Let your joy be turned to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of God. I like this. And only then will He lift you up. 
We must not endeavor to lift self. But let us humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord himself, and then he shall lift us up. And so today, that's the desire, and that's what we want, to see men and women come to Jesus Christ and him crucified and allow him to be real to them. Allow Christ to be your Lord. And so treat this very seriously. Let us be sincere today. You could kneel at your couch there in your home or wherever you may be and pray the true and sincere prayer unto God that says, Lord, come into my life and into my heart. I don't want to miss out on the riches of your grace. I don't want to be bypassed and miss out on those things you have made available to me. Lord, I want to serve you all the day long. And you just may find yourself singing alone as you hop around your coffee table or whatever the case may be. But as you enter into the presence of Jesus and begin to enjoy him, you will find out and discover what James wrote about here, that he will draw nigh to you. Isn't that what we want in America and around the globe? Isn't that what we desire for Christ to be real in us? To see our churches livened, to see the families. And, and the Lord placed this in my heart this morning. I want to share it with you before I close today. And that is, may the dads of our world rise up and be truly family men. Leaders of the household and lead the wife and children to Christ Jesus. If there is no man, or if that man will not do so, lady, you rise up. Mom, aunt, whoever you are, you stand for Christ and lead those young ones. Lead yourself into the presence of Jesus. Build your own little altar at home. You don't have to take wood and nails and, and a hammer and, and construct anything in particular, but you can kneel at the bedside. That will become your altar. Kneel at that coffee table. Have the meal times and, and the lighter moments. But take time for God this day. And let him become your Lord. And I can assure you and guarantee you as per the scripture. If you will draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you dear friend. And so today as we wrap this message up. And look towards the closing of this service. God's given each of you an opportunity to pray that simple and yet very sincere prayer. Don't push away. Don't resist God. Resist the devil, he said. But draw nigh to Jesus Christ. So let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this day, for this message, for the opportunity to share your written word. Be with them. Honor their prayer and their cries unto you. Move in their very homes in the living rooms and in the places where the people are today because they're certainly not able to attend your houses of worship but they are at their own homes and houses may they cry unto you and call upon you this day and we know you will respond and answer accordingly we give you the glory and the honor in the wonderful name of Jesus God bless you is our prayer.